Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here coming at you from a hotel room in Cupertino, California, because today was Apple's September event. And this is your first look, your hands-on, and your impressions and honest thoughts and everything you need to know about the iPhone 14 lineup. And while the phones do look pretty similar to last year, there is a lot of interesting stuff kind of tucked in and I've got a lot of thoughts on it. But as you might know, the September event, it is the iPhones and iPhone accessories. And so we did get new AirPods and a new set of watches, including a new Apple Watch Ultra that I also got hands-on time with. That'll be a separate video. I'll link it below the like button so you can check it out when it's live. Or hopefully you're already subscribed here with notifications turned on, in which case you'll see it right away. But that's gonna be a different video. But for now, our new iPhones in 2022, we have the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, and then the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. RIP to the mini iPhone, you had a good run. So the new baseline iPhones, as you can imagine, are pretty similar. It's just one is much bigger than the other one. So the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus have 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch displays respectively. My prediction on waveform uh, was that all the prices would stay the same and that turned out to be correct. So the iPhone 14 is 799 and the bigger 14 Plus is 899. And really what you'll notice is these two phones look very similar to last year with some, some bumps and refinements here and there, of course. But they both have the same A15 Bionic chip as last year, the same design, the same notch on the outside. I'm actually convinced that a case that fits the iPhone 13 will fit the iPhone 14. But the green is gone and there is a new light blue that matches my shirt extremely well. But there's three main things that are new here. The display, the cameras, and connectivity if that makes sense. So the connectivity is the quirkiest one, as you can imagine. Uh, you know how iPhones forever have always had a little SIM card tray on the side? Well, in the US, starting with the iPhone 14, they will not have SIM card trays anymore. They will be moving entirely to eSIM, electronic SIM, which is fine, I guess. I mean, they work well. It's typically very easy to upgrade phones or even swap between carriers. But I have to wonder, naturally, if this is also going to act as a little bit of an extra wall in the walled garden, because now how hard is it gonna be to switch from an iPhone to a non-iPhone? Just something to think about. But anyway, the iPhone 14's also got satellite connectivity for SOS. And this is actually really impressive. So in areas where you don't have any cellular connection, but you still need to send a message, you will be able to talk to satellites to still get a message sent. So now satellite connectivity is notoriously pretty difficult. You'd need a big radio or at least something with large external antennas, and you need an unobstructed view of the sky and you have to point it directly at a satellite. I mean, you've probably seen what a Starlink dish looks like. So now Apple's built this sensitivity into the iPhone 14's antennas and they've actually built a piece of UI in where it'll actually help you point directly at a satellite and it will help you send that emergency message. It'll actually package it up into a smaller format and within 30 seconds to one or two minutes, it can send a message even when you have no cellular connectivity. It's an edge case, hopefully you'll never have to use it but that is pretty cool that it can get it done. Um, and the details were it will be coming to the US and Canada launching later this year and it'll be free for two years. And then that's all we kind of know. But as far as things you'll actually use every day, the displays are the same size and resolutions as before, but they do get a bit brighter. Now 1200 nits max for HDR content, everything else is the same. And then there is a new camera system a larger 12 megapixel main sensor with sensor shift stabilization, a wider f1.5 aperture for better photos and hopefully better sensitivity and low light. And there is a new 12 megapixel selfie camera on the front with autofocus. Plus they've introduced this whole new photonic engine. Again, they name everything, but really that's just a better image processing pipeline from end to end, which should improve across the board low light sensitivity and nighttime photos, things like that. There's also a new action mode feature in the camera that does much more dramatic stabilization on super shaky videos. I definitely got to try this out for myself. It seems like it works best with certain types of shots, like the ones they use in their demos, but we'll see. Basically the way I see it is these new iPhone 14s and 14 pluses are essentially an iPhone 13 Pro one year later minus the telephoto camera and minus the ProMotion OLED dressed in aluminum. Like it's a very familiar phone. I guess on the plus side, pun intended, uh, having a larger iPhone with a 1080p 60 Hertz display means they can promise that this will be the best battery life ever in an iPhone, this plus. And I'm pretty sure this plus is gonna be a hit. If I know anything about regular people's phone buying decisions, I think spending an extra hundred bucks for a way bigger screen is a no brainer. So that's $799 for the iPhone 14 and $899 for the 14 plus, which actually comes out a month later in October for some reason. 
But then we got the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, which have a little bit more going on. It's still got all the new stuff from the 14 and 14 Plus that I just talked about, satellite connectivity, uh, action mode in the camera. It's even the same two sizes. Again, 6.1 inches and 6.7 inches. But there are three new things here. And those are a new A16 Bionic chip and an even bigger camera upgrade. And then this thing called Dynamic Island. We'll get to it. So the A16 Bionic chip inside is even more powerful and more efficient, as you can imagine. It's now a six core chip built on a four nanometer process. They're quoting 40% better than the competition. Sweet. Um, and there's also actually a slight display upgrade as well. This is up to 2000 nits max brightness outdoors, which is class leading. And the pro iPhones now finally, finally have an always on display. So you can see still the time and if you have notifications and even updated info on your widgets when your phone is locked and just sitting around on a table or charging. That I like a lot. But the big upgrades, like I said, are gonna be the camera and the cutout at the top. Okay, so the camera system is all new and it is bigger. Like you can tell just by looking at it that everything in here is bigger. It protrudes more off the back of the phone. But yeah, technically speaking, this is the first time in about a decade that we're actually getting a megapixel bump. This is a new 48 megapixel main camera sensor on the 14 Pros. So it's still gonna bend down to 12 megapixels for normal shots. You'll get 12 megapixel images out of it, but you'll hopefully be able to reap the benefits of higher detail, better low light sensitivity from a bigger sensor. But also if you want to shoot 48 megapixel photos, you can. You just gotta shoot Pro Raw. Then you'll get 48 megapixel shots. And then they also added a new 2X button into the camera UI, which might not seem like a big deal, but that turns out to just be an exact crop using the middle 12 megapixels of the sensor itself. So you can hit that 2X button to zoom in basically with optical quality, which is much better than before. Plus you still have the further 3X telephoto lens. The sun is setting real hardcore down here, so sorry if I start to look orange, but I'm definitely looking forward to testing out these cameras. Um, I've already been shooting a lot with the iPhone 13 Pro on the new autofocus channel. You might've seen that. If you've subscribed, you've noticed I've been experimenting with the cameras over there, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if we notice the difference by starting to shoot those with an iPhone 14 Pro and also comparing it to things like the Pixel and the S22 Ultras of the world. But then let's talk about this dynamic island thing. So, okay, I kid you not, when they first announced this, that they were gonna name it a dynamic island, literally the entire theater like audibly laughed. There was a laughter out loud from the crowd. Um, and I thought it was hilarious. Like, why would they name the pill? But then they explained it. And the more I've used it, and the more I've actually played with it and understood it since, makes a lot of sense, and I actually really like it. So basically what's happening here is Apple's shrunk down all the selfie camera and the parts of the Face ID system down by about 30%, and so they'll fit in this pill-shaped cutout in the top of the screen. Fine, if they'd stopped here, that would be an incredibly minor update. I mean, it's literally just aesthetic, not worth mentioning, since we see selfie cutouts all the time for years now, but then they went a step further with it. So. Since it's an OLED and you can turn off any pixels to appear pitch black, they decided to play with extending the edges of the pill with more UI. So if you have ongoing notifications or live actions, stuff like music playing or timers in the background or an Uber notification or whatever, those will show up and it has this nice little animation to extend and shrink and move around the cutout. And it works really, really well. So then you can tap on the icon to open that app and take action, or you can actually hold down to surface extra information for what's happening, which basically just looks like the widget that would be in your notifications just without having to pull down your notifications. This is cool, it's pretty cool. It works right away with a bunch of the stock uh, Apple apps, Apple Maps, the timer, the voicemails and all that stuff. But they say it will also work with third-party apps. Now this will be up to them how fast they wanna implement it, Fingers crossed that my favorite apps like Spotify and things like that get on it quickly. We'll see, but yeah. This immediately takes the, the whole pill cutout thing to a new level. The more I played around with it, the more I was impressed. I was trying it with multiple background activities happening at the same time, and basically what happens is it would show both. So let's say if you have a timer and maps navigation and music playing all happening in the background, the dynamic island would low key turn into like a little multitasking UI and let you quickly switch between these ongoing things. 
as it was already very intuitive. It also just seems to be pretty generous about where you're tapping. So obviously if you tap exactly on just the camera cutout itself, well, nothing will happen because those aren't actual pixels. It's just the camera cutout. But your finger is big enough that it naturally hits some of the pixels around the top and the bottom of the cutout. So it still knows to respond pretty much anytime you just tap the black bar. And there's also some active pixels in between. You can kind of see them at just the right angle. So if you touch in there, it still responds. It's really good. I think a lot of people are gonna really love this. You remember back in the day when there was like all these really friendly uh, wallpapers that would take advantage of like a hole punch cutout, they would go viral because it's like, oh, that's a really thoughtful way of hiding a hole in the screen. This is just like a, a next level upgrade moving version of that. It's, it's really thoughtful, playful, friendly, and intuitive, so it's just it's just a level up version of that. So even if the cutout looks a little worse sometimes when playing full screen videos or playing games, uh, I feel like it kind of makes up for it by being so useful so often. Also, I hope this is the last time I ever have to say the word dynamic island out loud. It's stupid that they had to name it, but that's how Apple rolls, so they named it. But yeah, that's, that's the new Pro phones. Also, there's this new purple color, kind of a dull lavender type of purple, but Again, same prices as last year too, $9.99 and $10.99 starting, and they go up to one terabyte. There's not a lot of crazy, innovative hardware design going on here. Nothing's folding in half. There's no super fast, high-end fast charging or wireless charging. It's just, it's just a bunch of little refinements again. At this point, we know what the iPhone is. Apple knows what the iPhone is, and they tend to be late on the train to picking up on things and then doing it in the Apple way, that's pretty much exactly what's happening with the cutout, and that's what the iPhone 14s are. Also, they sneakily left some of the 13s still in the lineup. The 13 mini and the 13 baseline are still available if you want them. $599 for the 13 mini and $699 for the 13. Now, I don't have the new boxes yet, but I think it's pretty safe to assume that none of the new boxes will have chargers in them because they haven't for years now, and that's where the sponsor of this video comes in, Anchor. You've heard of them. So they've got these two things that pair perfectly with the new iPhones, the new Anchor Nano 3 and the new 541 cable. So the Nano 3 charges with gallium nitride, which allows it to be way smaller. This little brick is a 30 watt charger, which is good for the iPhone or the iPad or the watch or even the MacBook Air, but it's literally 70% smaller than Apple's 30 watt brick. And the USB-C to lightning cable is the first I've seen to use bio-based materials, including sugarcane and corn but it still feels exactly like a good high quality cable because it is one. It's built to withstand 20,000 bends. There's a three or six foot version and they both come in five colors, including this lilac purple. You can check them out at the link below and pick up your own. But that's been it for this hands-on and the first look at the new lineup. Let me know what you think of the new iPhones. Honestly, I think, I think regular people are gonna love the dynamic island, but let me know what your thoughts are. And I also believe that the plus is gonna be a hit, but I'll see in the comments below what you guys are feeling. And also, of course, check out the other videos when they come out. Link below when I talk about the watch. Okay, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.